Okay, students, we're going to continue our GI lecture. This is a little segment is going to be over nausea and vomiting. Okay, nausea and vomiting, as we all know, is abbreviated N slash V. And if a client vomits, please, please, please measure the emesis. Emesis means vomiting. It is output. Uh, don't let them continue to throw up in the toilet and not find out how much they're throwing up. Coca means color, odor, consistency, and amount. So, you know, any fluid that comes out of the body, you have to measure coca. So the only way that you can measure the amount is to uh, have them throw up in a container. Um, there are different, you always have to assess the emesis because it will can give you cues as to what is going on. So here's a list of different types of emesis and we'll see pictures on the next page. <clears throat> uh, or coming up. Well, things to consider regarding nausea and vomiting is measure it, its output. Describe the color of the emesis. Know that dehydration can result if they lose too much fluid. If vomiting is recurrent, which means if it continues to happen, uh, then the client, of course, will be in PO, and they will have IV fluids infusing that contain uh, potassium chloride, because remember, potassium uh, uh, is in the GI tract, and if you continue to vomit, then you will lose the potassium. <clears throat> if the vomiting is recurrent, well, then, excuse me, the client may have an NG tube inserted for gastric decompression or suction, uh, so they're not continuing to throw up. So check the position of the NG tube and flush it to keep it patent. And if you have an NG tube to suction, you flush it with normal saline, 0.9% sodium chloride, 0.9% sodium chloride. Uh, when potassium is lost, and I'm going to make a note here. Don't forget the client would get hypokalemic and have a potassium level less than 3.5, which could give you muscle problems, muscle problems such as leg cramps and muscle problems such as the myocardium, which could give you cardiac electrical abnormalities. Uh, if you continue to vomit, you're going to lose excess amounts of acid, which will then throw you in a metabolic alkalosis. If a client is vomiting, then I do want to provide oral care. And anti-emetics may be prescribed uh, that include uh, ondansetron, which is Zofran, and promethazine, which is Finergan. And remember, most of these have sedating effects. So there are some safety issues there. All right. And uh, all right, let's just keep going. When collecting data about your client's emesis, use objective findings that you see. This looks like just, uh, just you threw up what you had for lunch. Um, it's still important that I look at it. I don't know how easy that is to measure because it is kind of clumpy and it's got food particles in it. But uh, not every vomit looks like that. Some vomit might be hematoemesis, and that is... Uh, bleeding up high. And I want to show you a word that ATI used. Bleeding above the duodenal jejunal junction. And I had never heard of that word before, but I figured it out. Duodenal means duodenum. And jejunal means jejunum. And you know those are parts of the small intestine. And you know where the duodenum and the jejunum connect is the junction. And so that means that the patient to, to vomit hematoemesis would have had to have bleeding above where the duodenum and the jejunum come together. In other words, an upper GI bleed. And I'm going to put that there, upper GI bleed, up high. And the reason they're vomiting blood is because if you're bleeding up high in the GI tract, vomiting out your mouth um, does not is not a very long distance 
from the bleed. So the blood comes out looking fresh. So think like a nurse. What blood test would the nurse most likely want to review if hematemesis is seen? And that's the CBC. And we would be looking to see what your red blood cells, your hemoglobin and your hematocrit are. Um, let me make a note. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. We would assess the client's stool color too, because if you're vomiting blood, then you would be pooping black, sticky, tar-like stool called melina. Now, use your clinical judgment here. If you see a client vomiting hematoemesis, I, I would, let's see. I, I see that and I have to think that you are bleeding up high. So the 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 red vomit and possibly and with the melina, I would think an upper GI bleed. My analysis is an upper GI bleed. Uh, prioritize this, it's urgent. Uh, generate solutions and take action. I need to notify the provider, but before I do, before I fill out that S bar and notify him, I need to get your vital signs. I need to take a look at his skin color. I need to look at his capillary refill. I need to look at his, uh, palpate his pulses to see how easy they feel, uh, or they are to feel. I need to look at his level of consciousness. Maybe he has a new onset of confusion. I need to look at his urine output. Maybe his urine is starting to slow uh, in order to hold more fluid and it would become dark in color. Uh, then I need to call the doctor uh, with the S-bar form and I would expect that he would order a stat CBC. I think he, if the hemoglobin is less than seven, we would order a trans, blood transfusion. I think he is going to order a scope of the upper GI tract uh, to see where the bleed's coming from and to stop the bleed. I know that to evaluate the outcomes that he is improving when all the symptoms that I see that indicate blood loss are resolving. He would be staying the same if he remained unchanged. Um, and he would deteriorate and decline if he got worse than what he already is. Okay. All right. And let's keep going. Hmm. Coffee ground emesis is old blood, um, probably down lower, uh, lower than the duodenal J junal junction. It's still not good. Uh, and we'll use clinical judgment here. Okay, just listen to me. See if you can follow along. If you need to stop and write down what I do say, then please do. Okay, so if I see the vomiting of coffee ground emesis, uh, that's my cues. That's my cue. Um, and I would analyze, analyze that. That is a bleed of old blood. I would gather some more information. I need to look at his vital signs, his level of consciousness, his skin color, palpate his pulses, check his capillary refill, um, uh, check his urine output. I would need to call the doctor. I think this is urgent. I uh, generate solutions, take action. He's probably going to order some type of a GI diagnostic test to find out why we've got this old blood in there. He's going to order a stat CBC. Um, he's going to, uh, if it's the hemoglobin's less than seven, we'll get a blood transfusion. Um, he we're going to need to stop the blood uh, and he'll have to figure out how to do that. Uh, I would know that my client is getting better when this goes away and his signs and symptoms improve. I will know that he's remained unchanged if he looks the same. And I know he was deteriorating if he continues to vomit this and the symptoms go down the tubes. Okay. Uh, but this is not good. Right. Well, come on. <laughs> okay. Vomiting yellow or green um, is usually bile related. And ATI loves to give you a big word. It's called bilious vomiting. 
And if you have never seen that before, Billy S looks like Billy Rubin. So uh, that would be a yellowish green. Now here's a guy who's got green. Here's Susan Livingston who had an NG tube put down and it's, oh, it's a dark yellow. Um, because I went into the ER with unexplained abdominal pain and vomiting. And um, I had uh, the couple of days before had digitally disimpacted a fecal impaction. And my peristalsis had slowed down and things weren't moving through. And I was very, very sick. Um, I think if the client was diagnosed with a small bowel obstruction or some type of blockage, you know, then I think that this color of emesis could be seen. Um, the abdomen would be distended, and mine was. Um, you could have hyperactive bowel sounds in the upper quadrants, absent bowel sounds in the lower quadrants, or no bowel sounds at all. Uh, so nurses use clinical judgment here. So if I see this vomiting, <clears throat> I have to think that you've got something slowed down in there and that Billy, the bile and Billy Rubin's not moving through like it should. Um, prioritize this, uh, not urgent, urgent, but you need to be seen. We need to figure out what's going on. Um, generate solutions, take action, uh, assess the abdomen, you know, call the provider, do an abdominal assessment, of course, call the provider, Use the S bar form. I think he's going to want to. They did a cat scan, abdominal cat scan for me. They might do an ultrasound of something. Um, they might do an MRI. They might do abdominal X ray. Uh, they'll draw blood work. They'll draw a CBC, a BMP, or a CMP. Um, well, they could put an NG tube down to for gastric decompression for suction, which they did for me. Well, and then I would have to check placement of the tube and flush it with normal saline to keep it patent and prevent it from getting occluded. I would continue to do an abdominal assessment. Um, I would make you NPO. Uh, I would start an IV, uh, which I do have one, but it the, here it is right here. You can't hardly see it, but there's the IV there. And I would make sure that your IV fluids had potassium in them because if we're sucking out your stomach, you're going to we'll be sucking out uh, your potassium. I would monitor your IV site for IV site problems. Uh, and I would uh, evaluate outcomes, see if you're getting better, see if you're remaining unchanged or see if you're improving. Okay, so that's kind of what I think there. And what I'm doing as I'm lecturing to you is I'm just sitting back and I'm looking at these pictures and I'm going through the clinical judgment out loud with you. So again, I'm not, I'm saving time and not writing a lot of things down. So if you need to push pause, rewind and, and write down my words, then please feel free to do, do so. Okay. Uh, this is the last slide of this particular lecture. So a nurse notices a decline with an NG tube. So there they are to gastric decompression. There's the suction. Drains coffee, colored appearing drainage. And there it is. That looks like coffee ground emesis. Uh, oh, I don't like that at all. So um, let's just, let's answer these questions and we'll go through clinical judgment. So what blood test is critical to review here? Well, that looks like old blood, so a CBC. Why does this client have an IV? Because you can see their IV right here. Well, because they're going to be NPO, because we're sucking out their stomach. The IV fluids will contain potassium chloride. So here's IV fluids with potassium chloride, because you know potassium is going to be sucked out of the stomach. What IV site problems could you monitor for? Um, phlebitis, which is inflammation of the vein which would be a red, hot, swollen, painful IV site, or infiltration, which would mean the IV cannula came out of the vein and went into tissues, which would mean the fluid is now going into the tissues, which is going to make the tissues around the IV site swell and be cool to the touch. If I encounter those IV site problems, I need to stop the IV immediately, take out that IV, and move it to another location. 
uh, what is the responsibility with the NG tube is to uh, make sure it stays taped to the nose. Uh, please uh, check placement to make sure it's still in the stomach. Um, flush it with normal saline to keep it patent. Uh, uh, and measure the output, co coca, color, odor, consistency, and amount. So I'll have to, that's output. Um, since this is blood loss, um, what symptoms could indicate that significant blood loss has occurred? because I would need to S-bar this and call the provider. So you've got to look again at the vital signs, the level of consciousness, the skin color. Look how pale she is. I bet she's lost a lot of blood. Uh, palpate her pulses, a check her capillary refill, look at her urine output. Um, I would get all that together. Uh, I would call the provider. I would anticipate a stat CBC. I would uh, anticipate that if a hemoglobin was less than seven, we need to do a blood transfusion. He's going to order a test of some sort to find out why she's losing her blood. Um, and I need to keep an eye on her. And I know she's improving when her symptoms turn around for the positive. I know she's remaining unchanged when she doesn't look any different than she did before. And I know she's going down the tubes and declining when her signs and symptoms continually further deteriorate. So with that being said, that is the end of the nausea and vomiting um, lecture. Oh, and another thing I would do is hopefully with the tube down, she to suction, she won't feel nauseous and she won't vomit because we're sucking out her stomach. But there will be PRN antiemetics on the MAR in case she does uh, feel sick. And I do know that if the tube became occluded, then it won't be sucking and then she definitely will throw up. So um, that concludes this lecture. So thanks for listening and I'll go ahead and post it. Thank you.